not sure if this is something I ordered on eBay or not. It's got one of these like straight from China, you know, with the free delivery for your $1 item. So not sure if it's something I've ordered or something somebody has sent. Oh, yes. Oh, I remember. I actually ordered this. I have to do a video on it. Now what this is, is one of these um, ODB2 fuel saver things. You plug it into your um, ODB port on your car and it's, um, it's supposed to like talk to your engine management computer and do whatever to um, increase your fuel economy. And somebody actually sent in an email for this because they saw it on like Facebook and all the scammiest uh, stuff is on Facebook and it costs like a fortune. Um, it was very expensive, they had a slick website and everything. So let's actually look at this uh, link that someone sent me and it looks totally scammy. Check it out. And <laughs> eco fuel, choose your fuel type, gasoline car. Look, it looks at the exact one that we got. Watch this. Eco fuel, checking three warehouses for available stock. Yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Reserving your units because oh, you don't want to miss out. You don't want to miss out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's just an animated GIF. They're not really checking any of that. It's bullshit. One EcoFuel at a 50% discount. 75 bucks. Pay with PayPal. I'm surprised they don't take Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> best seller, two EcoFuels plus one for free. Wow, you're going to want to pony up the small amount extra for the 115 smackers to get three of them when you can buy one for 75 bucks and get three for 115, regularly 450 bucks. Three year additional warranty. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Lock in this great price while you still can. Richard R. <laughs> From, it said like three people are currently uh, in the checkout process and stuff like that. David M. in Palmwoods just bought one EcoFuel. And these this shit just keeps popping up. This is, this is hilarious. <laughs> but you can see why it just seems like completely scammy. Pay with credit card. Yeah, I'm going to whack my credit card into EcoFuel24.pro. <laughs> Someone just, oh, in Geelong, just bought <laughs> five units. <laughs> and they claim all sorts of stuff at remaps, remapping the car's computer. After driving 200 kilometers, it adjusts itself to the car according to the driver's habits and all that sort of jazz. And But as it turns out, um, it was the real expensive one um, is exactly the same as this one I got on eBay for like five bucks delivered. Fantastic. Can you get the pattern for it? Anyone? Bueller? It's got the pattern number? I don't think so. <laughs> I expected just there to be nothing in there. But sure enough, they actually have... It, it looks legit and they've rubbed the numbers off the micro there so you can't see everything and I have actually mapped out uh, these pins on here and they are the correct pins 15% fuel saving two year warranty fantastic this one's actually done by a company called Nikkei also on the uh, plastic enclosure as well and it is a complete and utter scam it does not do anything at all the instructions are really quite vague it just says press the reset button for five seconds after plugging in release the button just wait for a short while it'll communicate a established connection but it doesn't actually tell you that the button's actually hidden inside here behind here and there's one little hole for the lead but it's actually got three leads in there three indicators so i i don't know like there's no other details in here apart from how to find your um obd2 connector so yeah that's it <laughs> But look at how many cars it's compatible with. Of course it is, big as a dozen bloody talk to them. All right, let's power this turd up and see what happens. Our 12 volt uh, power is this pin here. And it's supposed to be these two pins up here, four and five, but these aren't actually joined on the board. They go off to different places. We'll have a look at the board layout in a minute. Let's power it on. And we've got our LEDs. And it's actually drawing a fair amount, jeez. 50 odd milliamps and if you put that on there you can see the lead through there but you can't really see the other one so you know it's really pretty dodgy <laughs> but you can see like it's trying to connect <laughs> even though we've got nothing hooked up to it it's just fl flishy flashing and like there's no instructions as to what that means but like you know to the casual observer it looks like this is doing something. 
And if we hook it up to just a uh, CAN bus demo that's outputting like just a demo signal, it does exactly the same flishy flashing. Granted, this is not going to simulate the uh, data that's inside the car, but it doesn't matter because this is a complete scam. And there's another actual bus in there which is called the uh, K-Line, which is on the two pins next to it. And that's an older uh, system, I believe. I don't know the exact uh, details, but the CAN bus is the... Uh, uh, modern one. Now it does actually seem to have like different modes. Um, you just saw in that uh, video clip where it uh, actually turned this lead off and it did that for a while then it switched it back on and then it, the yellow lead in the center here would like come on for like uh, five seconds and then turn back off for like 20 seconds and now just magically it's come back on and it's connected I guess because they don't give you any instructions even though I've got a completely fake CAN bus here and of course if you disconnect it it, it makes absolutely no difference so it does the same sequence regardless of whether or not it's sitting here with no CAN connected whether or not it's got like just some sort of data pulsating on the uh, CAN bus or whether or not it's in your car. So here's the CAN bus on my Toyota Corolla just under the dash here. I'm just going to plug it in and uh, see if it does any difference in the uh, little light show that we got. And that's with the ignition off. All right, let's turn the ignition on. So I press the reset button and it's doing exactly the same sequence as what's on the bench. The ignition is on, so I'm following the instructions and it does diddly squat. Anyway, I'll wait a minute and if I start the car up, <laughs> it's going to do exactly the same thing. So the way these scams work is that uh, they give you a fake little light show there and uh, they pretend that it's connecting uh, to something when in fact it's not. <laughs> it's doing diddly squat because how do you support all these different, you know, <laughs> dozens of different model uh, no, brand cars, let alone all the different models with all their different ECUs and everything else. It's complete and utter bullshit and they combine it with some, you know, slick marketing to make you want to buy the thing. But even for five bucks delivered on eBay, it still ain't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't do anything. It's not even talking to the computer. Uh, yellow LED is now switched off and it will hopefully come back on for the yeah, there we go. Comes back on, flashes for a little bit. It does exactly the same sequence as what it does in the lab. Surprise, surprise. Oh look, look, it connected. It connected in quote marks. <laughs> what a load of BS. Now, a CAN bus is a differential uh, signal, which is actually um, terminated with 120 ohms on either end. And if we have a look at uh, the CAN signal that we're actually uh, generating here, it's just a test signal. You can see that uh, here's the ground here, and it's centered around uh, two and a half volts here, and that's your positive and negative line. They're just a, uh, a classic differential signal. See? direct opposite. So the CAN device, in this case, our little uh, fake um, fuel saver, has to actually listen to the bus and then try and uh, do arbitration on the bus to be heard and then to be able to, once it does that, it actually transmits um, something. So how can we be sure that this thing's not talking to the CAN bus? Because really we'd need like a proper ECU connected or a accurate ECU uh, emulator and we'd need uh, to sit there and monitor this in real time over a, a fairly decent length of time to see if it actually transmits anything to the CAN bus at all. Well, we don't need that because let's take a look at the board. Okay, here's the high CAN high and CAN low pin, okay? While it might look like they're routed out. Look at this. It's going through a 10k resistor here over to a pin. This one, the negative here, is going through a 10k resistor over to under there somewhere. It's got to be connected to a pin, doesn't it? Well, the first thing is that you don't put two 10ks in series on a CAN bus. It's terminated in 120 ohms on the bus. Lower than that because it's like each end or whatever. So, like, it's just not, even if this thing wanted to drive the CAN bus and could, it couldn't do it because the two 10K series resistors wouldn't provide the drive capability 
in order to go onto the bus. But have a look down here. Let's just, should we zoom in a bit closer? Wah, 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 wah. The silk screen is over the pad. That, <laughs> there is no solder on that pin at all. It is not connected because the pad was not exposed. And that is the, <laughs> that is the line leading to the can high line. <laughs> Half of these pins aren't actually connected to the board. So you don't need a simulator or any monitoring at all to know this thing just physically cannot connect to the CAN bus. It's a scam. So they're actually doing a rather poor job at this. I'd at least would have connected it to the CAN bus even if it didn't do anything because then you would really to debunk this thing and call it a scam you would have to as I said monitor that CAN bus in real time have a, a simulator or emulator or whatever for the ECU and you'd have to see that it actually did it actually transmit something and that's actually quite a, a complex and involved thing to do especially if you want to you know test it over hours because it might sit there monitoring for hours but you know gathering all this data and, and only then might it actually start talking to the ECU and trying to program something but I, like they didn't even go to that sort of effort so I didn't know why they even why they bothered with this sort of complexity at all it's just ridiculous but they've deliberately this is done at the PCB design level you deliberately mask over those pins so they're not even connected it's just nuts we've got a five volt regulator here a couple of uh trannies here to drive the leads and, and that's and a button to do a fake reset on the thing and it just goes through a light show sequence that's it just designed to con people into thinking that it's connected and it doesn't even show these leads like it's only got the one hole for this lead here it's just an absolute boondoggle of a, of a device. The problem with this sort of thing is people want to believe in this sort of stuff. It's like the audio fool, audio file, you know, products that don't do anything. It's like if you pay like $5,000 for an IEC power cable to hook up to your amplifier, so that's going to increase the sound stage and the presence and all that other bullshit, then Trust me, you're going to hear the difference because you paid five grand for that thing. You will hear it. Likewise, if you pay for one of these uh, fuel saving devices, there's a very good chance that you're going to see some fuel savings because <laughs> you believe in it. And that's you're going to like uh, your mind's just going to go, oh, yeah, it's like it's giving me an extra, you know, uh, mile per gallon or whatever. I converted for you Yanks there, you know, liters per hundred Ks here <laughs> because they don't do controlled proper controlled testing they've got no way to actually back that up so you'll get the positive reviews on the website there'll be a few negative ones as well of course but people just ignore those and look joe blog's got like an extra couple of miles per gallon or something like that so it's got to be a winner it's got like four stars on amazon or something and of course the company will add in fake reviews as well and <laughs> these things just they can't do anything it's not even connected so it doesn't even like monitor the CAN bus for like signals so that it at least changed it when you turn the ignition on. <laughs> Light sequence is just the same either way. Well, so don't fall for these scams. See, when you see websites with the look and feel like the one we showed at the start, you just know these things are a scam. Now, that's I said it before, there might be genuine ECU things out there that can actually, and I know there are people out there who modify uh, you know, their ECU by writing various things. You can clear errors and do all sorts of things that might might help improve it. And I'm not saying that's not possible because, hey, the manufacturers do it, right? It's all, it was part of that emissions um, scam thing where they would have different modes and they reprogrammed the ECU to pass the emission standards and stuff like that. So, you know, it is possible, but these devices here are a complete and utter scam. They're not even bloody connected. Unbelievable. So don't fall for it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you can discuss down below. Let us know if you actually do this legitimately on cars because I know that there's a lot of my audience who do automotive uh, stuff and things like that. So, you know, it certainly is possible, but not with, <laughs> not with one of these. Unbelievable. Catch you next time. Hello.